All right, congratulations on the in-principle approval for a major payment license from the MAS. So tell us, what does this mean for Ripple's operation? There was speculation that Ripple's case with the U.S. SEC will be settled by mid-year. Well, we're here now. So far as it's involved in securities markets, and we will complete that consultation before the end of the year. So by the time you get to the end of 2023, we believe that we will have global standards in place recommending how crypto should be regulated insofar as they are a securities regulatory challenge. Oh, um, our decision to put 54 billion XRP into escrow and what was behind that and whether we would use that, for example, to fund the lawsuit. Handling of ISO is moving. Um, we're, the, the industry is still a ways away uh, from really being able to fully utilize and leverage uh, ISO 2022. Then go after this one, make this one seem okay, and then go for the, the end kill. I would not be surprised if they eventually sue Ethereum. I would be surprised if they go after BTC. This question of interoperability and the fact that we have something which is coordinated as a, a framework at the international level. because. In a statement, Ripple said the license also allows the company to expand customer usage of its on-demand liquidity service, or ODL. That's a service that leverages the XRP cryptocurrency to facilitate cross-border payments. We're working to get rid of Gary Gensler. Uh, I gave a hearing where I was able to communicate with him and say, look, I plan to fire you. Enjoy the ride, pal. If you got some bags, welcome to the party. Welcome back to some more. Moon o'clock news, no breakfast, no coffee, just straight extra, extra. Bullishness, shout out to the latest sub, appreciate you stopping by, stuffing some bags, go ahead. Throw on those moon suits, throw on those pilot shades. Buckle up, because the future's extra, extra. Bullish, let's go full speed, full throttle. Into the cryptoverse, we got BTC's dominance right around 48%, ETH at around 186 we got XRP in that number six spot, right around 47 and a half cents, down about 2% in the past 24. Stellar XLM, right around 10 cents. We got BTC, 30,000, 524. We got ETH, right around 19. 2K, we got Flare Networks here, right around 0.014. Songbird, 006. We got Expector at 0.052. Xlist, 001. ELS, 0024. We got EQ, 0.0385. We got Casino Coin, triple zero. 01393. We got a tweet from Well Chart to kick things off. Breaking news crypto exchange Hobbit executes a massive rug pull, selling a lot of the tokens belonging to their customers, not your keys, not your crypto. Get that XRP offline into your own self custody, cold storage. We got Riz XRP, Ripple on demand liquidity volume surging in Asia Pacific. You know what's coming. All right, congratulations on the in-principle approval for a major payment license from the MAS. So tell us, what does this mean for Ripple's operations in Singapore and the Asia Pacific? It allows us to offer regulated digital payment token products and services, which will enable us to better support and scale uh, the use of on-demand liquidity, or ODL, uh, by our customers in Singapore and across the APAC region, uh, and that are looking to explore blockchain and digital asset technologies for their cross-border payment and treasury use cases. With on-demand liquidity volumes surging in Asia Pacific, uh, we know that there's great appetite from customers in the region to engage and explore with blockchain and digital assets. Um, and this obtaining the in-principle approval uh, of the major payment institution license to better support these progressive customers and scale our ODL services to ultimately build a more inclusive and, and borderless financial system. Okay, right. Rahul, so how does Singapore then fit into Ripple's global operations? Singapore's location makes it uh, a prominent gateway to emerging markets in Southeast Asia, uh, as well as developed markets across the Asia Pacific. Uh, we're a global business, and we remain hyper-focused on building our teams outside of the U.S. Uh, about 90% of our business is global, uh, and Singapore, and to a large degree, the, the broader APAC region, is one of our fastest-growing regions and remains high on our list for recruiting. You know, at the start of the year, there was speculation that Ripple's case with the U.S. SEC will be settled by mid-year. Well, we're here now. Can you give us an update on how the legal case is unfolding? We continue to push for a speedy resolution uh, and we look forward to proving that Ripple did not violate securities law and that the SEC never provided Ripple with a fair notice that its actions would ever be prohibited under law. Um, 
the decision and timing is ultimately up to the judge. Uh, we don't have any control over that. The world is transitioning to a new standard on the XRP ledger, the internet of value. Know what you hold? We got Brooke and Whistle. Good morning, Bangkok. The Ripple crew was out on full force last night, lighting up the front of the W Bangkok as we gear up to host our first Thailand Policy Summit later this morning. Looking forward to the action-packed day of awesome content and discussion in this key market. All roads lead to the Ripple net. We got 801 XRP. We promise to give global recommendations around how crypto should be regulated around the securities markets by the end of 2023. TikTok. TikTok. On this extremely important topic that has taken a lot of our time recently. And coming over here, I was trying to think how best to explain our changing attitude to crypto over the years. And if you think of crypto as having developed in a set of phases or cycles, so if you look back at the beginning, back famously in 2008, 2009, it was set up. Okay, then you had a first, as I, as I see it, this is my own sort of informal history, uh, a first sort of wave or boom around the time Litecoin was established in 2011. They built up a few assets. Then you had another sort of crypto period in 2013, 2015, at the time Ethereum was founded. Now, in truth, I would say our efforts were of limited success in that period. Um, so we have just published in May this year our recommendations as to how crypto should be regulated insofar as it's involved in securities markets. And we will complete that consultation before the end of the year. And we will also have published a separate document on the particular issues of, C of DeFi. And we hope to have completed that by the end of the year as well. So by the time you get to the end of 2023, we believe that we will have global standards in place recommending how crypto should be regulated insofar as they are securities regulatory challenge. And then we will move on to the same sort of issues that Dylan has. Uh, uh, with 2023, time is ticking. Dollar cost average. Oh, you still have some time. We have Volante Technologies. Fed now testing has arrived ahead of this July launch. While the window of early adoption may be closing, what actions can you institute to take to prepare? Read on our latest blog by Deepak Gupa. Fed now testing is here. U.S. banks begin transacting on the instant payment network ahead of the July launch. We got Cowboy Crypto. Our decision to put 54 billion XRP in the escrow. And what was behind that? David Schwartz. What was the question? Oh, um, our decision to put 54 billion XRP into escrow and what was behind that and whether we would use that, for example, to fund the lawsuit. So we're primarily VC funded. Um, that lets us use our XRP strategically. We don't so much have to use it like a bank account. We can more use it as a strategic tool. Uh, certainly, if we were if, if you could imagine we're going to act in our own interest, if we were threatened and we had to draw on that, we certainly would to protect, that would protect hopefully the space as much as it would protect us. We're going to act in our, in our own interest. But we don't have to draw off that, like to pay salaries, or we, we can be strategic. We can use it to align incentives. Um, institutional buyers who may buy XRP with a lockup, they have an aligned incentive with us and other people who hold XRP because the future value of XRP is very important to them, and that's and we're able to use it that way. It certainly is also a source of revenue. I'm not saying that's not the case, but I'm saying that that's not all of what's going on. Obviously, we think the price is going. You know, if we succeed, we believe that's going to put upward pressure on the price. And if we fail, well, we're going to fail no matter. You know, if we fail, we fail. It is Mr. Man XRP, the industry is still a ways away from capitalizing the ISO 20022. ISO is being implemented in the U.S. the same way as other countries around the world. Handling of ISO is moving. The, the industry is still a ways away uh, from really being able to fully utilize and leverage uh, ISO 20022. But we see the benefits on a day-to-day -day basis. <clears throat> and as the industry starts to adopt and you start to see them talking about the benefits that they get, uh, you're going to start to see a real um, acceleration of that in the business community, especially the upper end of the business community. And then just one last thing I wanted to mention with respect to what Dan said. Uh, we are implementing the ISO standard in the U.S. in the same way that it's been implemented in different countries around the world and by different operators around the world. That's something that this industry has never done, at least as long as I've been involved in it. And by leveraging those same standards for real-time payments country to country, uh, we are going to wind up seeing instant cross-border payments in the near future. We've already got proof of concepts that have tested the ability to do that. Um, and it's something that, again, we're going to be continuing to build on. But it, the foundation for that is the instantaneous settlement model and very, very much so the deployment of ISO 2022 standards. Using XRP, faster, cheaper, more efficient. No more middlemen. We got digital asset investor. Nothing to see here. Just a member of the European Parliament hosting an event with Ripple. My question is, why aren't members of Congress hosting events 
with Ripple. Happy to host an event at Ripple for colleagues from both the public and the private sector on blockchain sustainability in the EU. XRP, you know what's coming. Another one from DAI. Bitcoin is the kill shot. Craig DeWitt, former Ripple and vice chair of the U.S. Faster Payments Council, TikTok. At some point, my, my guess though, if I, if, if I really think what's going on, I think that there is an effort to actually try to kill crypto within the United States. And my gut, this is just a guess, my gut is that they're following kind of a classic federal regulator approach, and that is divide and conquer. Go after this one, make this one seem okay. Then go after this one, make this one seem okay, and then go for the, the end kill. I would not be surprised if they eventually sue Ethereum, right? Those folks were cheering when ETH got, when, when XRP got sued. I imagine they go after Ethereum. And the Bitcoin maximalists are cheering for that right now. And then after they do that, would be surprised if they go after BTC. That's the path that I see. XRP, the only one with clarity, coming soon. Bye bye, BTC. Bye bye, ETH. We got XRP drop 7 4 2023 cross border payments. The question of interoperability. This question of interoperability and the fact that we have something which is coordinated as a, a framework at the international level. Because if you have a virtual asset service provider subject to rules on one side, sending the money to another country where the rules are different or where the rules don't exist. That's where you have the challenge. Because they are obliged to, to apply rules and they can oblige just one leg of the rule, not the other one, that, uh, meaning that they don't have access to the information related to the beneficiary, for example. Because the first thing that we have to do is to convince these uh, new actors that, yes, there is an added value to be supervised and to implement certain rules. Why there is an added value? Because it will help them also to develop sustainable activity. And uh, it's good for the integrity of their business. So that's what they have to understand. Meanwhile, BRICS, 130 countries move towards CBDC currency, US dollar. Jeopardy. XRP. Ready? Where is XRP? XRP. Well, let's kick it off with a big development for Ripple, the company closely linked with cryptocurrency XRP. On Thursday, Ripple Labs Singapore subsidiary Ripple Markets APAC announced it received an in-principle approval for a major payments institution license from the Monetary Authority of Singapore, or MAS. The license will grant Ripple the permission to provide regulated digital payment token services and products in Singapore. In a statement, Ripple said the license also allows the company to expand customer usage of its on-demand liquidity service, or ODL. That's a service that leverages the XRP cryptocurrency to facilitate cross-border payments. Last year, much of Ripple's global ODL transactions flowed through Singapore, which serves as the company's Asia-Pacific headquarters. How can they not see what's coming? XRP hidden in plain sight. If you know, you know. John Deaton says, look at Uphold's balance sheet of XRP. I wonder they're big fans of the XRP community. Uphold, why is Uphold different? The Uphold platform is always 100% reserved. Our highly experienced risk team includes ex-financial regulators and a former state prosecutor. We publish our assets and liabilities in real time. Our operating entities are domiciled and licensed in the US, UK, and the EU. We never loan out customers' money, so it's always available when you need it. We're subject to regular U.S. state audits. And as John Deaton says, look at Uphold's balance sheet of XRP. No wonder they're big fans of the XRP community. XRP, you know what's coming. They know what's coming and they can't stop it. We also got another one from Uphold. Beta version of the new Uphold Inc. app is in stores. An effortlessly simple modular interface that makes all the information and capabilities on the Uphold wallet even more easily accessible to our users. Looking forward to it evolving to become infinitely personable in the future versions. We got Expector, the official end of the Expector land pre-sale is Friday night, July 7th at midnight Eastern. Take the next step and be among the first to own your part of the new frontier. Time is running out. Last chance for the pre-sale. And we got BPM wallets. This is an open invitation to our wonderful community and also to the other projects on the XRP ledger. We'll be hosting an event in Kingston upon Thames, London on the 27th of July. And we would like to welcome you the opportunity to attend. We have been working extremely hard on developing the MVP minimum viable product. 
of our blockchain event ticketing app and we're excited to release the app and perform a demonstration at the event. There will be some special yet to be disclosed guests attending the event and we would also like to meet as many of our community and fellow projects as we can. If you wish to attend, links will be down below. Please fill out the form on the website bpmwallet.io, the London MVP launch July. 27th. We got JD, XRP, need all three checked for the parabolic move. ADX, DI, bullish cross, not checked. MACD, bullish cross, not checked. Ultair, trend line, breakout, check. Still waiting. ADX, DI, and MACD cross on the macro. XRP, setting up that next. SEC, face melt and pump. And we got Coins Kid, XRP, monthly. 2017 XRP printed a 10 and 20 golden cross. Last time we saw the monthly 10 and the 20 EMA golden cross was in 2020. XRP rallied over 720%. If we see another golden cross, a 720% rally sets a new all-time high. My minimal target, if we see a all-time high taken out, is a $9 XRP. Know what you hold, know what's coming, and know why. They want you out. Where will you be when that regulation jar molasses? Finally breaks open an XRP's true price is finally set free. Bye bye glitches. I am the XRP bagman, the moon commander, currently up here on the mothership, stuffing some bags and enjoying the show. Appreciate you stopping by, tuning in, smashing those likes for some more. Moon o'clock news. Hope y'all continue to stay extra, extra bullish out there. Continue holding those good vibes. Remember to sell the FUD, buy up those bags, and don't forget to spread that liquid love also if you're new here don't forget to drop a subscribe drop a comment down below all the og diamond hands out there drop a comment down below drop an elbow on that like button from the top ropes catch you up here top floor on the mothership for the moon party byob be your own bank bring your own bags peace out crypto ghost I don't listen to no false prophets Too busy getting to them profits Got my stakes locked in One percent and they can't stop it We got plenty of options We got plenty of options I don't listen to no false prophets Too busy getting to them profits Got my stakes locked in One percent and they can't stop it We got plenty of options We got plenty of options I don't listen to no false prophets Too busy getting to them profits Got my stakes locked in One percent and they can't stop it We got plenty options We got plenty I don't listen to no false